Well, hello good people. Today let's have some fun, shall we? I want to explore the topic of maximum DPI for gaming mice because it's such an arbitrary and almost vague number that nobody should ever use. So why does it exist in the first place? So here is me gaming at 400 DPI. As you can see, I have full control, my muscle memory kicks in uh, in terms of flicks and aim correction when I overshoot my target. But here is me gaming at 16,000. 16,000. DPI. It is impossible to game at 16,000 DPI. You probably already knew that. It's hilarious and it's also frustrating. Even after lowering my sensitivity in Windows and in game to somewhat of a level where I have a bit more control, it's just, it doesn't make any sense. But of course, there are reasons why we have mice with 16,000 DPI sensitivity, with 12,000 DPI and CPI. So let's talk about all the reasons why, right after this. The new T4 Excalibur DDR4 memory is one unique RGB kit with awesome light spill from each module, and the special edition has a cool totem design on the light bar. You get lifetime warranty, up to 4000 megahertz speeds, and full lighting control through the software. Check out the T4 Excalibur RAM down below. All right, so I'm a bit of a mice collector, and so here's a collection of all my mice and their maximum DPI sensitivity. Starting off with the lowest one, I have the Zoe FK1. It only goes up to 3200 DPI, which is respectable given its target audience for esports uh, players, and most of whom don't go above 1000 DPI because you wanna have that control when doing those headshots. Moving up the scale, we have the MX Master 2S. It's a productivity mouse, but it only goes up to 4000 DPI. And they say only, in comparison to what you're about to see come next. My favorite still series mice, the Rival 310 and 600, both go up to 12,000 CPI, then Logitech's G305, G403, G603, and the original G Pro go up to 12,000 DPI as well. But if you're not moving up the DPI chain, are you really advancing? And this is where I think, you know, gaming brands are kind of in a dilemma. They want to appear like they're releasing new products and innovating, but, you know, releasing a 16K sensor versus a 12K sensor we had two years ago, technological advancement is there and you can appreciate for this true one-to-one -one performance throughout the entire range, no filtering from 100 to 16,000 DPI. It's impressive, but it doesn't matter. It seems like it's being released just as a showpiece, you know, like this is where we are right now with sensor technology, uh, but, Machines can detect 16,000 DPI with no filtering, but humans can't. Now, I love the approach from Logitech in terms of releasing these new sensors and upgrading their older mice, like the G502 Hero and the G Pro now have the new 16K Hero sensors without any price premiums. You're still paying $79 for this and 69 for the G Pro mouse and the wireless integration, of course, is a brand new one, but it's awesome to see older bodies being upgraded with the new sensors without any price premiums. But of course, marketing has played a huge role in increasing the maximum DPI, I think, because 16K sounds a lot better than 12K and below, but I think as a gaming community as a whole, we've moved beyond perceiving high sensitivity sensors as anything of like value to us because now it's all about the weight, the shape, the buttons, the quality of the entire structure um, more than the sensor itself because the sensors are becoming so good that any advancement in them is almost irrelevant. So for example, the original G Pro, a mouse that I've used ever since launch, a fantastic performer, and by the way, you can check out my favorite list of mice down in the description below along with mouse mats, but the new G Pro has the new 16 Hero sensor, an upgraded cable based on feedback, but everything else is identical. And aside from having the thinner cable that doesn't kink, my perceived performance between these two mice, one is 16K sensor, the other is 12, is identical at 400 DPI, so it makes no difference. But now I'd like to discuss all the reasons why high DPI sensitivity exists. In the first place, let's begin with high resolution gaming. So I went back to CSGO, I enabled 8K resolution via DSR. I know it's not exactly 8K resolution since I'm playing on a 4K display, but just having control is so, it's almost impossible. Even though I played this for half an hour before recording this gameplay, just to understand how my cursor would, you know, behave and, uh, you know, and how much movement I have to control. So in any of these examples, you can see the mouse is very jerky, I have very little control of where my crosshair goes. 
Uh, and in CSGO, it's super important because that's how you aim. So precise and accurate shots are, are important. So for example, here I take out my pistol trying to aim and I'm trying to correct for my error, but uh, it's just impossible because tiny movement of the mouse, so like a millimeter movement of the mouse mat is so much movement on screen. It's almost like I'm flicking everywhere and just simple aim becomes impossible. Now jumping into Quake Champions, another super important FPS where aim is crucial, but this one we have a bit more margin of error because rocket launchers and other weapons deal damage in the radius format so you can still shoot at the wall and potentially kill your opponent. So here is me playing at 400 DPI. I'm very comfortable with my aim. Uh, I know exactly where to pre-aim when I go around certain corners. But then when we switch to 16,000 DPI, the story changes. And just as with CSGO, my aim is impossible. I cannot find my target. And uh, it was quite frustrating. At 16,000 DPI, it's quite unnatural having such slight motion of the mouse itself that moves so many pixels on screen. If you really want to test your in-game patience, play with an extremely high DPI that is unnatural and uh, yeah see how frustrated you get but gaming aside another argument for having high dpi sensitivity on the mouse is if you have multiple high resolution monitors so imagine if you have eight 4k displays all together and you need to get from one corner of one of them to the bottom you know dragging windows and stuff and right now i'm at 12,000 dpi and you can see just how fast i can maneuver that window and this is at 100 percent scaling but then you lose the whole control you know the precise accuracy is lost when you're dealing with something that is so high in dpi but i'm guessing having that really high 12,000 or 16,000 dpi in a really large pixel real estate might actually be helpful for productivity as long as you can uh, drop it down for that navigation accuracy. The new Mark II Corsair Strafe and K70 keyboards are fully loaded with custom illumination, convenient media buttons, USB pass-through, extra set of keycaps, and ergonomic wrist rest for each keyboard so you can type or game comfortably with a variety of MX switches available so you can check out which keyboard suits you best in the description below. All right, so the takeaway is this. Gaming at really high DPI makes no sense, even if you're trying to control for it by lowering sensitivity in-game and increasing it on the mouse to take advantage of the full potential of that 16K sensor, because it's all about showcase. It's about like, here we can make this technology happen without increasing the price uh, and not because the users necessarily need it. And I would love for you guys to do something uh, go to your maximum DPI on the mouse and record yourself in gameplay and send it to us on Twitter because I want to see the hilarious reactions of trying to control something that's so unnatural and unfamiliar based on what your original or most common DPI is. All right, I'm Dimitri. Hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to check out this other relevant content. Check out our new boot sequence channel and uh, all the mice and things will be listed in the description below. So yeah, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.